Okay, so LDIs and ketones, um, we're going to work through these two sections quickly. I like to do LDIs first, but you can see they're both carbonyl compounds. They've both got the C double bond O group. It's just the position of where that C double bond O group that changes it between being a ketone and an aldehyde. Now I'm going to jump through the PowerPoint quickly um, and then uh, we'll work from there. So um, here we go in the PowerPoint. They're both known as carbonyls, all right? That's because of that group. Um, now here we're going to look, uh, this is the structure of the carbonyl group. Uh, the bond angle is about 120 degrees. That's not crucial for you to know that, but you've got a double bond to, um, you've got a double bond to this oxygen, which is important. Now, aldehydes, uh, they have got, the only difference between the two is the structure, is the position of the aldehyde group. Um, so in aldehydes, this carbonyl group is positioned at the end of the chain, and so it's attached directly to a hydrogen. Any molecule where the carbonyl group is attached to a hydrogen is an aldehyde. A couple of examples for you. That's the simplest one, methanol, um, and there's ethanol. Now, uh, you can go and play with the structures of those if you want to. What do you think we call that one? Well, obviously, I've done it for you. It's called propanol. Propanol. Now, I haven't given you the full structures, but you really need to do that. Okay, uh, you can stop the uh, PowerPoint show here and the video and you can go and do it for yourself. Here they are. Um, there's methanol. Um, one carbon aldehyde, uh, carbonyl on next to the hydrogen. And then obviously if it's only got one carbon, that one also has to be a hydrogen. Acetaldehyde is the old name for this thing. Now we don't use that name anymore, um, but you need to know what it is. Uh, the uh, name we use now is ethanol. That's the more um, modern name using the naming system. It's got two car two carbons, and obviously the carbonyl group's got to be on the end. So it's two carbons is eth, ethanol, okay? All the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, so that's where the A-N comes from. Propanol, three carbons, all saturated, all single bonds between carbons, but you've got a carbonyl group on the end, all right? So that's three uh, very simple aldehydes for you. Aldehydes got quite a musty sort of a smell. They're quite distinctive. Um, we don't do any particular reactions of them you just need to be able to distinguish them from ketones right so what's the story with ketones well they've got the same um, issue in them they've got this carbonyl group but now it's got to be in the middle of a chain this carbon must be connected to two carbons now what i'm showing you here is that this carbonyl and actually all carbonyls this would count for aldehydes as well that carbonyl group is a is a is it's a polar bond so the carbon is a bit uh actually this is the wrong way around and the white got the wrong way around. The carbon is a bit positive and the oxygen is a bit negative. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. We'd have to fix it. Um, so, uh, yeah, this this should be negative and that should be uh, a little bit positive. And that means it's a dipole. And so you've got dipole, dipole, intermolecular forces. They have given you, given you the general formula. But the dipole, dipole, intermolecular forces would mean it's got a slightly elevated boiling point and melting point. Okay. Now these two groups, R and R1, R just stands for a carbon hydrogen chain, and they can be the same or they can be different, it doesn't matter. All right, so they've got functional group isomerism. I mentioned this under isomers. Um, if you look at these two, uh, no, those aren't uh, functional group isomers. Functional group isomers would be um, this one uh, will have the same molecular formula as propanol. Okay, so propanone and propanol would both have the same molecular formula. Butanone and butanol would have the same molecular formula. So they would be isomers. These are some isomers just of ketones. All right. Um, this functional group isomerism might come up in the um, um, notes again. I did do it properly under the um, isomers video. Anyways, so these are examples of propanone, butanone, and pentanthione. Now, obviously, for um, aldehydes, you never have to say where the carbonyl is because it's always on the end of the chain. It could always be number one, so we don't put the number in. But for ketones, the there are some of the compounds where it can change position. Now, in propanone, obviously, for it to be a ketone, it's got to be in the middle carbon, and that means it's on this one. So it can't be there or there because then it would be propanol. So there's no other possibility, so you don't have to put a number in. Butanone, you've got the same thing. Uh, I'm going to just jump out of here quickly. Um, actually, no, I won't. The carbonyl is here on this carbon, but so you might want to call it two butanone. But if you put the carbonyl there, 
it would just be the same molecule flipped around 180 degrees. So again, you don't have to put the number with butanone. If you did, it probably wouldn't be wrong. However, with pentan 3 ohm, there's another possibility. Pentan 3 ohm, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. That's why it's pent. Pentan 3 ohm, because if you count 1, 2, 3, you can see the double bond here is on this third carbon. Even if you count it from this side, 1, 2, 3, it'll still be the same thing. But pentan 2 ohm does exist. If you had this carbonyl group on the second carbon, it would be pentan 2 ohm. So there you've got isomers. And they would be what kind of isomer? Not functional group isomers. They would be positional isomers. Well done. So here I've given you a little task to illustrate the structure, the full structure of these examples. Um, and I've asked you to show the name of the corresponding aldehyde isomer. Every single ketone has a corresponding aldehyde isomer. <clears throat> Again, stop the video, uh, go and try that on a piece of paper, and then come back in a few seconds and check yourself. I'm just going to and see if you've got, to got them right. I'm just going to keep plowing on, assuming that you've been very obedient and you've stopped it and now you've gone and done it, and now you are back. So here they are. That's propanol, okay, and that's propanone, and those two are the functional group isomers. If you see one, two, three carbons, three and three is six hydrogens and one oxygen. One, two, three carbons, four, five, six hydrogens, one oxygen. Exactly the same molecular formula. Um, so that's propanone there, and this one is propanol. Then here you've got butanone, butanone, one, two, three, four, butanone, and uh, you should also have um, butanol. Uh, I didn't draw butanol on here, I'll put it on the next page. Uh, so that's butanone, that's the isomer of um, butanol. I don't know why I didn't draw it on this page. Anyway, pentanol and pentan 3 own, uh, or pentan 2 own, you could have had. But these two are functional group isomers because uh, this is a different functional group to this one. All right, um, here's butan 2 own. Um, and butanel. So here I've done them both on the same page. Here I've showed you the general formula. I'm just trying to make a point here. Um, so this is the C4H8. They're both C4H8 O's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these are functional group um, isomers. Functional group isomers. All right, so that slide makes it quite clear. Okay, so that is aldehydes and ketones. I'm going to jump um, back to the notes here now, I think, and uh, just go and finish off. Um, see if we've covered all of this. So ketones contain the functional group, that's it. Um, the carbon is bonded to two other carbons. Yeah, we said that. Uh, that's fine. Uh, R1 and R2 are the alkyl chains. They are R1 and R2 or R and R1. The condensed formula would look like that. That's propanone. Ketones are polar solvents with low boiling points. Okay, I didn't mention any of that. Um, and then here's a, a good example. Um, propanone is a common name is acetone and it's the main ingredient of nail polish remover um, these things are very really good solvents here all right and it's polar because I told you that um, carbonyl group is polar aldehydes uh, it's got to be on the end of the chain uh, the carbonyl group must be on the end of the chain um, so there you've always got the hydrogen there condensed formula there we go CHO and uh, example um, propanol more reactive than ketones um, and therefore frequently unstable. But that's about all you need to know about them. And then I think after this, we're going to move on to uh, carboxylic acids, but I think that comes earlier on in the notes. All right, so that's ketones, aldehydes and ketones done. Uh, I'm going to stop this here now and then um, um, move on to the next one.